The only thing that matters now is everything you think of me. In you I find my worth, in you I find my identity. You say, I am strong because I believe. Wonderful message. We have several announcements today. Uh, the first one is, uh, after our second praise song, we're going to be passing the offering plates for the hurricane victims, and this is going to Ides. So be sure and mark on your check that it is for Ides, and make sure your regular offering goes in the boxes. And if you're doing cash, there's envelopes in the pew you can use and make, just write Ides on it, and that will be perfect. Also, short greeters meeting after church today, uh, on October 22nd from 4 to 7. Uh, Twin States having their Trunk or Treat cruise, our last car show of the week. So bring your kids out and come out and enjoy the vintage cars that they have. Also on the 23rd is our refuel and classes. Saturday, ATAP will be here in the parking lot also. And uh, come and enjoy them. And let's support ATAP. Um, also, we have our all ministries meetings. That will be a week from Monday. And Chris has an announcement. Thank you, Pastor Jeff. Yes, let's support our praise or our tech team in the back because they've had a kind of.
items, I imagine those items will be with charge cards. The doors open at 4. It is sold out. So if you want to get good seats, the closer you get there to 4, the better chances. You can save seats. Those of us going to lunch will try to get there when they open. And we are going to try to save enough seats for all of us. There are 26 of us going. So see you at church or at lunch in church. Thank you. Rise. Who said that? <laughs> OK. The um, There's a, a list out there with phone numbers on it for everyone that's going. If you want to carpool, I suggest you call a friend or um, call someone from the list, and we'll see if we can't set something up. I didn't get a lot of response for this, and so I didn't pursue that. But please, my list name is on there. Uh, everyone, raise your hand if you're going, please. So, does someone need a ride? Okay. See you there. It should be wonderful. Okay, next. Okay, really quick. We've had several sermons on leadership, and so it is nomination time. Compliment somebody by nominating them for a deacon or the clerk. Um, that's that's your and there will be nomination forms in the back of the church that you can um, take. Ask them. Say, hey, I think you'd be a great deacon in this church. I see you as a as a leader. Um, would you prayerfully consider that nomination? The second thing. Exciting! Wednesday nights, we're doing Adventures in Odyssey. What is that? Hey, get out your phones and look it up. It is an incredible program that um, supports um, a young people in learning about Jesus, what it does. It, it's the land of Odyssey, and there's, um, there's all these different, there's a thousand different um, podcasts as well as uh, um, videos and things like that. It's awesome. So, in recognition of this, we had an ice cream party because Wits End, he runs an ice cream shop. He is the leader of Odyssey. So, it went over so well with the kids, the kids said, let's do it after church. So, we're going to offer ice cream after church. All you got to do is come up to the table, grab an ice cream. I'll have a video going on in the back about adventures in Odyssey. Thank you so much for supporting our kids and all the things that, that you do to make our kids' program um, successful. And now, Steve, back to you. Thank you, Jane. Let's open a prayer today. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, as we navigate this river of life, Lord, if we just cast our cares upon you and lean on you, Lord, you will carry our burden. Lord, we just thank you for that. Lord, we thank you for our church. We thank you that we can reach out to our community and spread your love and your salvation. And Lord, just be with us. Help us grow. Help us reach out in our community so that we can be that voice. Your love is so great. You're caring for us. It's so wonderful. Lord, we just thank you. In the precious name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Let's stand and sing together. Brothers, sisters, come on down to that river. Guaranteed you'll never be the same. There's a fountain flowing from the heart of the Savior. Bring your sins and all your guilty stains. Let that river of life wash it all away. If you've been searching, carrying burdens, if you've been lost and looking for if you've been drifting and something's missing, you should know that you are not alone. Brothers, sisters, come on down to that river. Guaranteed you'll never be the 
same There's a fountain flowing from the heart of the Savior Bring your sins and all your guilty stains Let that river of life wash it all away Oh, come on down to the river Oh, come as you are, no time to waste Open your heart, don't be afraid Jump on in, the water is fine There's healing in the river of life Come as you are, no time to waste Open your heart, don't be afraid Jump on in, the water is fine There's healing in the river Everything will change Let that river of life Wash it all away Oh Come on down to the river Oh Come on down to the river oh. Come on down to the river oh. Let that river of life Wash it all away Ooh, that river of life Has so much power Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? Whose love is mighty and so much stronger? The King of glory, the King above all kings. Who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder? Who leaves us breathless in awe and wonder? The King of glory, the King above. sing for all that you've done for me who brings our chaos back into order who makes the orphan a son and daughter the king of glory the king of glory who rules the nations with truth and justice shines like the sun in all of its brilliance the king of glory the king above all kings this is amazing grace this is unfailing love that you would take my sing for all that you've done for me worthy is the lamb who was slain worthy is the king who conquered the grave worthy is the lamb who was slain worthy is the king who conquered the grave worthy is the lamb who was slain Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy, worthy, worthy. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. 
Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. Yes, as our guys come up, uh, there was uh, Ray Watkins caught me before church today, and uh, Hubbard City is also running a food drive this Saturday from noon to four. Uh, PNI Trucking has promised them two uh, trailers to take things down. So if you have extra food, uh, there'll be two flyers on the table in the back. So if you look through the flyers, you see what you can supply there for our hurricane victims also. This will be going down to Asheville, North Carolina. Our scripture this morning comes from the book of 2 Peter, chapter 1, verses 5 through 9. For this very reason, make every effort to supplement your faith with virtue, and virtue with knowledge, and knowledge with self-control, and self-control with steadfastness, and steadfastness with godliness, and godliness with brotherly affection, and brotherly affection with love. For if these qualities are yours and are increasing, they keep you from being ineffective or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For whoever lacks these qualities is so nearsighted that he is blind, having forgotten that he was cleansed from his former sins. And uh, we'll pray for that offering and pray that God uses it in a mighty way. Lord God, we thank you, Father, for the money that's come in, and Father, for the hearts of the giver. Lord, I thank you, Father, for your relief efforts in every life. Uh, we know that IDES does a great job where they're at. Uh, they're on the scene whenever there's a disaster, not just in this country, but around the world. And so, Lord, we pray for organizations and ministries like IDES, and we know that all of our funds uh, will go uh, to the betterment of the people that are in need. In Jesus' name we pray. All right, everybody, uh, momentum today. We're going to be talking about momentum in your spiritual walk in life. And in order to start this off today, I just want to kind of make my way back here because I've always envisioned that, you know, it'd be nice if we were on an escalation system here because there's always so many people in the back and you are always welcome in the back. But if you thought about it, if you escalated and moved forward to the front, you see how crowded it gets in the back? What happens is somebody walks through the door, and we only have eight rows. See what I mean? So if you could move up, you don't have to do it today, but I've always envisioned an escalation forward, all right? So imagine that. If I had the control of that, I'd have you all getting different views of the congregation and different views of the auditorium as I spoke to you every day. We're going to talk about momentum, and we are in the book of Second Peter, and I thank you for being here today, and I thank you for your momentum in the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, Second Peter Chapter 1, verses 5 through 9, if you have your little green Bibles, um, the, the uh, English Standard Version, I'm actually going to be using that today, but also there's NIVs in the front of the pews. So I invite you to turn uh, in your Bibles to, to uh, first Peter, as, Second Peter, as Shelley just read, chapter 1, verses 5 through 9. Now, uh, real quickly, momentum is the uh, strength or the force that moves us forward even when the path is difficult. Even when the path is difficult, momentum moves us forward. Uh, it, it's the driving energy that propels us uh, towards our ultimate goal. And what's our ultimate goal as believers? I knew you'd all say that. 
You know what I think our ultimate goal is? I think it's being transformed in the likeness of Jesus Christ. Uh, because that's an earthly goal that we can, you know, God's given us heaven, right? That's a promise. We have the promise of eternal life. But I think, uh, ultimately, we're trying to be more and more like Jesus Christ. That's our goal, to be more and more like him. That's what we want. That's our destination. And so I want you to press uh, towards that with the uh, enthusiasm of a toddler. I want you to have the kind of momentum today, you know what? Uh, there's nothing uh, greater and stronger than a toddler on a sugar high, right? So I want you to have that kind of momentum in your spiritual walk in life. Now, let me give you a, a definition uh, for momentum. It's the strength or force that something has when it's moving. Something has when it's moving, all right? That's momentum. And so today, if you want to have momentum uh, in your heart and life uh, so that you're getting closer and closer to Jesus and becoming more and more and more and more and more and more and more like him every day, let me start with a quote today. It comes from a financial uh, expert, if there's such a thing as a financial expert, also a motivational speaker and author, and his name is Charles uh, Charles J. Givens. Charles, J's, Charles J. Givens. Here's what Charles J. Givens said. He says, success requires that I expend 10 units of effort in order to produce one unit of result. All right, so in other words, if I want to grow in my walk in life with Jesus Christ, uh, then I need to apply 10 units of effort in order to get one unit of result. All right, let, let me, let, let me uh, bring it to you this way. Let's say, how many of you think uh, if we could, we could actually bring a Volkswagen through the doors of this church? Would it be nice if we could do that? Uh, a couple weeks ago, someone was throwing away this toy car out in the uh, dumpster, and I almost kept it. I thought I could use that as an illustration sometime, but I let it go, and I should have, because three weeks later, I needed in a sermon. So just... Picture with me a Volkswagen, like the love bug, right here on, on, on the stage. And if I want to make that thing move, I'm going to have to put it in neutral. Let's say I have to give it a push start. Uh, I'm going to have to give it 10 units of effort in order to produce what? One unit of result. So at first, I have to push really, 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 really hard. But then uh, Charles... Uh, Jay Givens comes back and he says, your momentum will then produce 10 units of result for every one unit of effort. Uh, think about that. What happens when the wheels get rolling and that vehicle starts? And then all of a sudden, it's a little easier for me to push, isn't it? When someone puts their foot down on the accelerator, I have trouble keeping up with it, right? Uh, and that's kind of the idea here. We want to use that formula for su success as an analogy for spiritual growth today. Because I believe there are probably a lot of Christians out there who want to, myself sometimes included, we want to put forward how many effort, how many units? One unit of effort in order to get 10 units of result, right? We want that, don't we? I mean, we want to, I mean, we're, we're, we're that way. Uh, the path to least resistance something I think we all wouldn't mind taking. But you know what? That's, uh, that's impossible, all right? Uh, it's impossible. Not only that, it doesn't work that way. You've got to make an effort, and Peter will tell us today, we have to make every effort. So look in your Bible. Look real close at what it says. Uh, listen, uh, if you're not moving for Jesus, you're moving for something. And listen, Jesus would rather move with the movers than he would sit with the sitters. Does that make sense? He'd rather move with the movers. In fact, there is no such thing uh, as an idle believer in the kingdom of God. No such thing. Uh, momentum is never by accident. It's always by choice. We must choose. Uh, we put forth the effort. Uh, we must prioritize. Priorities, commitment, and stewardship. It's all about those kind of things in our Christian walk in life. Would you agree with me so far? All right, so it, it, here's the thing. The, the life of a person in momentum is blessed. It's the blessed life. But a lot of us, we want the easier way out, right? We'd rather give one unit of effort to get 
10 units of result. I mean, wouldn't you rather that? But that's not how we grow in, in Christ. So if you found in your relationship with Jesus that, that you've slowed down, uh, maybe it's, you've had issues come along and it's caused your momentum to stop, it's hard to get going again. Once you slow down, you know, you slow down a bit and you stop and then you putter and slow down a bit more and stop and you go a little bit further and you stop. It's hard to get started again. Uh, and so uh, the Bible says there's a way that seems right to people, to man, but in the end is the ways of death. So we don't want to go that, that, that wide road. We want to go the narrow road and it's going to take effort. Uh, once you find a better way, make that way better. All right, so we're going to go down. I want to give you some, we're going to use the word momentum. We're going to start with gaining momentum and then go on to accelerating momentum and so on and so forth. So are you ready to go? Are you ready to push your Volkswagen? All right, let's push our Volkswagens if you're taking notes with us today. First of all, gaining momentum. So in our text this morning, Peter says, and for this very reason. Or exactly because of this. I like to say exactly, Zachary, Zachary, okay? Exactly because of what, Peter? Well, remember last week's lesson? And we talked last week a little bit about um, how if we want full salvation in Jesus Christ, right, he's, he's granting it to us. His divine power is giving us what? Everything we need for life. Isn't that great? That's, so because of that, exactly because we have our salvation, exactly because we have everything we need for life, exactly uh, because we become partakers in his divine nature and we share in the divine promises, because of that, exactly because of that, he wants us today to add some quality characteristics to our faith in life, all right? And, and so what he wants us to do is add seven qualities to our, our faith. Uh, and another way to look at that is that we are um, uh, uh, supplementing our faith by adding these seven things. Um, and and uh, so these are seven elements in order to create a harmony of holy living, not begrudgingly, but, but generously. So first of all, faith is the foundation. If you're reading, writing your notes, write that down. Faith is the foundation. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, without faith it's impossible to please God. All right, and faith is also uh, not static. In other words, faith, it, it, faith moves. It requires continuous growth and development. And so here, Peter outlines a sequence of virtues that are built one upon another that create spiritual momentum that gives strength to our faith. All right, so we're going to take these seven characteristics and we're going to put a mixing bowl in front of us and we're going to mix them in as ingredients and see what we turn out with. Maybe chocolate cake. Sound good to you? I like chocolate cake. I like chocolate cake. Uh, actually, what we're going to do is create a kind of a, a parade of, of virtues and people are going to look at our lives and they're going to say, wow, what a difference Jesus has made. And you know what? These virtues have been given. They've been given to us. Now, one other thing I want to remind you of before we get to these seven virtues uh, is that they're in the present tense in the original language, which means that we have to ask ourselves the question, are, am I growing in my faith? Am I growing at, by adding these things to my faith, or am I stuck in a spiritual rut? Is my car stuck? Is it, it you know, I did this one time where I was out uh, driving, had a friend in my car, and I was in, in Lincoln, Illinois. It's one of our Bible Bowl trips, actually. And the guy next to me was Jeff Knubel, and I'm driving through a parking lot. I hit a, uh, I hit a speed bump or a, a parking, you know, those parking dividers. I hit one of those going about 30 mile an hour. And Jeff's like, you're going to get us both killed. <laughs> so you ever have that happen? So we don't want to slow down in our Christian walk in life. We want to keep going. What I want you to do right now, take your hand, put it in your lap. And as I go through each one of these seven virtues real quickly, I want you to either give me a thumbs up. You don't have to show me. Just show yourself thumbs up or thumbs down. How you're doing? Are you doing well? Thumbs up? Are you not doing so well? Thumbs down. Okay, so let's start with the first one. The first one actually is virtue, but it means goodness. All right, everybody say goodness. All right, moral excellence. Uh, this is moral excellence. This is the courage to do what's right. Having the courage to do what's right. Uh, moral excellence. Somebody once said your ideal is what you wish you were. Uh, your uh, reputation is what other people say you are. 
uh, but your character is what you really are. You know how they say character in, or integrity is what you are when no one else is looking, when no one else is around. So how you doing? Thumbs up or thumbs down on that first one? Thumbs up. How are we doing? Thumbs up, thumbs down. Here's the second one is knowledge. Knowledge. Uh, these are all from Peter, right here from the Bible. Hosea chapter 4, verse 6 says, My people are destroyed for their lack of knowledge. Now, this isn't just intellectual understanding here, but we're talking about a deep experiential knowledge of God and his ways. And so how do we, how do we know about God and his ways? Bible. Yeah, read. Yeah, read the Bible. Uh, you know, be in, be in prayer. Uh, seek God. Seek to learn about him, about his wisdom, about his character, about his ways. That's how we do that. Uh, David, the psalmist said, your, your, your word is a what? A lamp and a light unto my, my past, Psalm 119, 105. Uh, and so I imagine it like this. Let's say you're in Youngstown, but you want to get here to Corner House Church, and it's pitch black. What are you going to do? Hopefully you're in a car, right? You're not walking. But if you're in your car, what are you going to turn on? All right, your headlights. Uh, are your headlights going to suddenly illuminate this church so you just drive straight to it? Of course not. What do you got to do? You got to see the road in front of you and know the way there. And that's what this is for. This helps to illuminate our path day in, day out. That's how we get to heaven, right? Uh, we don't just go there right now. Uh, we, we work our way there like that. So, and through the, of course, through the precious blood of Jesus Christ and the knowledge of him. Self-control. Oh, by the way, thumbs up or thumbs down when it comes to knowledge. Uh, self-control. Without self-control, knowledge is, is nothing. Knowledge would be kind of like going to Johnson and Wales School to become a culinary aficionado, whatever, you know, being a chef, and then coming back here and going out to eat every day, right? It's like you got a lot of knowledge, but you're not using it much, all right? So that's self-control. And we know when it comes to self-control, it's tough, but it's necessary. I'd like to go home today and eat about six pieces of chocolate cake and then see if I have room for a salad. How about you? <laughs> but that's not discipline. So instead, uh, I have to try to discipline myself by saying no to things that hinder my spiritual growth. But we need to practice self-control in our thoughts, with our tongues, with our tempers, and with temptation. All right, so how are we doing when it comes to self-control? Ups or downs, ups or downs. All right, let's go to the next one, perseverance, steadfastness. Uh, you know how they say cleanliness is next to, in this case, it's perseverance, okay? <laughs> Perse perseverance is next to godliness right here. Uh, and so they got it, Peter got it out of, out of, out of uh, order. But uh, this means to bear up under trials or to remain under trials. It's the idea of enduring uh, difficult circumstances. Some of you are doing that right now. You're here and you've got tears behind your eyes, you know, because you don't want to shed them in church because you're going through trials and tribulations. And that's the one way that people look at us and say, wow, I wish I was more like them. And that means they wish they were more like, like Christ. Peter told, or Paul told us that we should remain in the circumstance that we're in when we first believed. If we're a slave, stay a slave. If we're, if we're a if we're married, stay married. If we're, if we're uh, single, stay in that, that way. So, if you will, thumbs up or thumbs down for perseverance or steadfastness. A godliness is the next one. Godliness. What's it mean? It means to have Christ at the center of your life. There's an old Latin saying that they used to practice in the church called Coram Deo, and it literally means to live before the face of God always. How are we doing when it comes to godliness? We got thumbs up or thumbs down? Thumbs up or thumbs down? Uh, and then brotherly kindness, all right? Just turn right now and say a good word to somebody next to you. Wake them up. Just say, hey, wake up, you. Uh, you guys are good at that. Yeah, brotherly, sisterly kindness, that's pretty important too. Uh, this, is, uh, th this is having nothing but love for fellow lovers of, of God. There's an old saying out there, get this, that goes like this, to dwell above with saints we love, now that will be the glory, but to dwell below with saints we know, now that's another story. <laughs> you ever hear that? Um, and so Peter tells us in 1 Peter chapter 1, love one another deeply from the heart. How are we doing there? Going north or going south? Going north or going south? All right, let's go to the last one, and of course it's the capstone, and it's love. 
love itself, talking about agape love, not just loving, not just loving one another, but loving even our enemies. Uh, being able to say to someone more than just, I'm putting up with you, but I love you. Uh, being able to say to someone who's bugging you or bothering you, you know, I'm not going to love you when you stop bothering me. I'm going to love you no matter what. I'm going to love you no matter what. Uh, that's agape love. Agape love is not only emotion. Sometimes love involves emotion, but mostly it involves action. Action. So we don't wait to feel love before loving. We love no matter how we feel. All right, those are the seven characteristics. I hope you're giving a lot of thumbs up, but you may be like me, you know, some thumbs down, too, in the process of that. And they all kind of fit together. They're part of that thing called the fruit of the Spirit. Uh, but, but here's the question. Will you decide to pursue those things in your life? And even the more difficult question, will you discipline yourself to do so? All right, so already we've gained momentum. Now, the last three points a little bit quicker. The second one, accelerate momentum. Everybody get your momentum going. Are you in momentum gear today to celebrate or to um, <laughs> uh, accelerate momentum? What Peter says here is he says, make every what? Effort. You know, make every effort. Someone once described faith as this. Faith isn't standing around with your hands in your pocket, but it's taking a step, one step, two step. Uh, three steps, and we're finally rolling. Uh, it takes 10 units of effort in order to get what? One unit of result. Yeah, very good. So then eventually our momentum produces how many? 10 units of effort or 10 units of result for just one unit of effort. What happens, though, if we continue to give 10 units of effort? We'll be chasing that Volkswagen and staying right with it, right? What would happen then? The results would be, I want to say, exponential, a uh, hundredfold in your spiritual walk in life and mind. So this is what Peter says, verses 8 and 9. For if these qualities are yours and are increasing, they keep you from being ineffective, unfruitful, and, and unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so notice Peter uses the phrase, these qualities here. And he uses it again in verse 9. What's he referring to, obviously? Go back to those seven ingredients we're supposed to add to our faith. All right, he's just, just reemphasizing that, man, we got to keep on keeping on. Keep on moving forward. Look, once you got your foot on the accelerator, don't let up. Keep on going. He said, because we don't want to be ineffective. Uh, ineffective literally means slothful uh, or, or idle. Proverbs 19.15 uh, says says this, laziness casts one into a deep sleep, and an idle person will suffer hunger. No believer wants to, if I asked you, you want to be ineffective, would you say, yeah, I want to be ineffective? Nobody wants to be ineffective. We all want to be moving uh, forward. And it, by the way, if you're not moving forward, what direction are you moving? Backwards. What happens if I keep going backwards? will fall off the stage. I, I just wonder, like, will we get a new president or another president coming on pretty soon? What if somehow Congress put out this edict, and the edict said, uh, you've got to only go through life moving backwards because Americans are going forward and, and, and they're, you know, just kind of getting lost in all the commotion. So from now on, we have to go backwards, all right? We just have to go all through life. How many would, you know, would you be able to do that? You'd need a mirror. You'd need a rearview mirror on your nose. Uh, what if you get in your car and I told you you had to drive down Interstate 80, you know, going backwards? <laughs> How many of you would be able to coordinate that one? Now think about it. But if you're not going forward, you're going backwards. It's what happened to the church in, in Ephesus, Revelation chapter 2, verse 4. Uh, John uh, exclaimed to them that they had left their first love. They left their first love. Uh, and so they needed, they, 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 they needed to realize how far they had fallen uh, and they needed to turn back and repent and go back to the way they had done things at first. That's the command, right? So that's what we need to do sometime as well. Why? Because we want to be productive. Uh, but if you pursue goodness and, help me out, goodness, knowledge, self-control, perseverance, godliness, God, uh, brotherly kindness, and love, then you'll be fruitful and productive. You'll be fruitful and productive. Uh, whatever you try and uh, whatever God calls you to do will be successful. All right, you can't get to where God wants you to go unless you do what God is calling you to do. So number three, sustain momentum. 
sustaining momentum. Let me read verse 9. Verse 9, for whoever lacks these qualities is near so nearsighted that he's blind, having forgotten that he was cleansed from his former sins. Look, if you're a person who professes faith in Jesus Christ, but you've not seen the goal of your life expressed in the pursuit of these seven qualities, then something's wrong. And Peter points out what's wrong using three words. He says, you're number one, nearsighted, two, you're blind, and three, you're forgetful. Does that sound like anybody here? Yeah. <laughs> that describing anybody here? Maybe somebody who's over 60 like me? You know? uh, you're, you're, first of all, you're nearsighted. Nearsighted means you can't see what? You can't see very far into the distance. Uh, and therefore, you've lost focus or lost sight of the fact that someday you're going to have to stand before the throne of God and give an account for your life. Nearsighted has to do with looking and seeing far away. But then he says you're also blind, and that has to do with just trying to see what's around you, uh, stumbling around in darkness, trying to find your way. Nobody likes that. Um, you ever get up in the middle of the night and you're trying to find your way to the restroom and you just kind of stub your toe or step on the cat, you know, or whatever in the process? You have to be able to see what's out there in front of you. And then you remember that you've been cleansed. You don't want to forget that you've been cleansed from all those sins, those past sins. Because when we forget that, we forget that we know Christ. We forget that we're, we're Christians. So what I want you to do right now, just remember with me, back when you were in high school and you had physics class. Anybody have physics class in high school or college? Raise your hand. One? Okay, now, uh, a few of you back there remember physics. And do you remember Newton's first law of motion? By heart. No, I don't think so. All right, here goes. Uh, unless acted upon by a force, an object at rest will stay at rest, and an object in motion will stay in motion. Now, I'm going to take a little drink of water. I'm going to come over here to my little table. In other words, unless someone or something does something to change things, something that is stationary will remain that way, and something that's moving will remain that way, will continue moving. That's part of the scientific law, the first law of motion uh, by, uh, by God, <laughs> by, by Sir Isaac Newton. Okay, so for, for example, I have a book here on the table. This book will remain in the same place I set it unless what happens? Unless I move it, right? If somebody here wants to come up and move the book, then it'll move, right? But if nobody does, hopefully it'll stay right where it's at. But if we apply force to this book and we slide it across the table, the book will want to continue in the same direction at the same speed in which it started. Uh, or what's going to happen? It's going to continue to the edge and fall off and hit the floor. Exactly. Uh, and so why does it do that? Well, when we apply, while we apply force, a force to the book to get it moving, there's another force we're working with, and that's resistance. So when I push the book, the table provides friction, doesn't it? Uh, now, if I push the book hard enough, what's going to happen? It's going to go to the edge, change direction, and what's going to pull it down? That's it. Man, we have a... You sure you didn't take physics? Chris is nailing this up front. That's good. Yeah, gravity is going to pull it down uh, to the, the earth. So the point I want to make in, is a spiritual point. Our lives are like this book, you know, and uh, maybe in the Christian walk in life, you gain some momentum, but then you experience trials and hardships and tribulations and troubles uh, and temptation. What happens? You begin to slow down because of the resistance. Or what happens if you just go at it with all your heart and everything, and sometimes you could be moving so fast you go off the edge of the table. We call that burnout, don't we? So we have to guard on both of those things uh, in our spiritual walk and, and, and life. Uh, we really do. Friends, God's Word and the Holy Spirit have to be the force in our lives that keep us moving. God's Word and the Holy Spirit have to be the force in our lives that keep us moving. Okay, let's put, do one more object lesson of imagination, if you will. Are you with me? Um, we're going to not only park a Volkswagen, the love bug, on the stage with us today, but we're going to, and I don't think we could fit this into the church, a 747. All right, let's say we have a 747. We'll make a miniature one on this stage along with a Volkswagen. How many of you think if we attached or uh, hitched up the Volkswagen to the 747, how many of you think the Volkswagen could pull the 747? 
All right, three of you. Good. <laughs> you didn't watch that commercial I saw a while back. Yeah, the Volkswagen can actually pull a 747, believe it or not. But can the Volkswagen make the 747 fly? No. All right, obviously, obviously not. And by the same token, without the power of the Holy Spirit, we, uh, we can't be everything that God wants us and intends, intends us to be. The New Testament talks about a people who have a form of godliness, but they deny its power, 2, Peter, 2 Timothy 3, verse 5. So that kind of religion is rather like a Volkswagen trying to pull an airplane. It takes great effort, but it's ultimately futile because it'll never, never fly. Jesus said, apart from me, you can do nothing. Good, good answers. All right, so there, there's a kind of effort that's completely futile, but there's also a kind of effort that's marvelously fruitful, and that's what Peter's talking about. That's what Peter's talking about. Are you tracking with me? Uh, that's it, when he says, for this very reason. So, in other words, in light of the gospel message, uh, in light of the fact that you and I can be participants uh, uh, in, the, in uh, the divine nature, in, in light of the fact that we could have all the promises of God through salvation, uh, that means that, that, that we are in a position to act. We're in a position that, to act. So um, if you will, fire up those engines and make that 747 fly. Will you do that? Because God has empowered you to be able to do Amazing things. Jesus said, greater things will you do than I. He said that, not me. He said that. So let's think about our, our spiritual walk and, 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 and life to that reason and to that degree. You know, most of the time, though, as Christians, we don't grow like we need to. Why is that? Because sometimes we want spiritual growth overnight. So I kind of want to begin to close with this thought. We want spirit. We look around and we see other Christians who are model Christians. We see somebody out there who's got the, oh, we're, cl we're close. Uh, we see somebody out there who, who's got this uh, great ability to memorize the Scripture or utilize the Scripture or teach the Scripture. Or we see somebody else out there, they've got such compassion and care. It's like their mother Teresa, you know, um, uh, re, I won't say reincarnated, but you know what I mean. Uh, and so we want to be just like that person. They seem to have the Holy Spirit. They have joy. They have purpose of life. Uh, they have all of those seven characteristics added to their walk in life. We want to be like them. But listen, spiritual development doesn't arrive overnight, does it? It takes time. It takes energy. It takes effort. It takes momentum. What we do is we begin to pray more. We begin to read the Scripture more and study. We get ourselves involved in a Bible study where we could learn and Eventually, we begin to teach others because we've learned more. We fast. We pray regularly. We become uh, like really, you know, like, like uh, I don't know what they said, but when that, uh, what's his name for the Yankees, hit that home run last night? Soto, you know, yeah, knocked that thing in the stands, and he's like going by his other teammates going, you know, you know he's, he just was pumped up, right? Are you a Yankee fan back there? Stop smiling. <laughs> yeah, he was just so pumped up. Uh, full of momentum, full of, of energy that's going to carry over for the Yankees into the World Series. But, um, you know, we, we take God's Word uh, seriously, and so we know we need to practice those disciplines. But we're not going to do it all ourselves because God is always working with us. We're working with God. God's working with us. We're going to sing this invitation to Him in a moment. But Philippians chapter 2, 12, and 13 captures my responsibility in God's role. We're to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. That's our part. For it's God who works in us, that's God's part, both to do his will and do his good pleasure. Now, right, right now, turn to your spouse, if your mate's here, and say, I'm going to continue to give 50% to this contract. <laughs> what are they going to say to you? <laughs> you better be given 100%. And God says the same thing about us. Give 100%, and he will give 200%, believe me. So the conclusion is we're going to maintain momentum. How are we going to do that? How are we going to main, uh, maintain momentum so we don't run out of gas in our spiritual walk? Well, first of all, if you have no desire to pursue a life that's holy, then you don't understand that Jesus came to die in your place and save your soul. You don't understand that he came to set you into a different direction and a new path. You know, our priorities drive our momentum. Did you know that? 
Uh, N.W. Lipscomb once said, if your position is everywhere, your momentum will be zero. Uh, and so if you want to find out where you're at right now, look at your priorities. Your priorities will find you right where you're at in, in life. So I want to close today, Matthew 6, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. I've got a rope here. This is my last illustration, I promise. Last uh, creative, little creative illustration. Um, look at this rope. Notice that it goes on and on and on and on and on. But just this little red taped part here represents your life here on earth. And the rest of this represents the entire expanse of eternity beyond us. How many times do we invest most of our lives in the, the red area, right? We get caught up in the concerns and the struggles of this world, and instead of having momentum to carry us forward, we focused on the red tape of life. So what I want you to, I want you to do is consider that the fact that what you do in this life does count towards the next life. You are creating momentum, and by focusing on what truly matters, we can grow in our faith and live with a sense of direction that extends us beyond this world and into the next life. All right, so I'm going to ask you right now uh, to make a, a move, all right? Earlier, I didn't make you move up, but I want to ask anybody that would do it to move, come up front here during this invitation. Maybe you just need prayer. Maybe what you, you would like to do is, is learn some more about what you need to do to follow Christ more closely. Maybe you might want to come up here, and, and uh, you've been reading in First Peter, and it tells you, First Peter 2.21, that uh, we need to uh, be baptized. We need to make a, looking at, at Jesus, uh, we need to appeal to him for a clean conscience. And what that means is that I can't save myself, and baptism is not about me. It's a work of God. I just need to, uh, I just need to surrender and give him my heart and my life. All right? So I'm going to ask you to do that. Uh, today as we sing, we do have one person who's coming to be baptized today, and if you want to start making your way to the front, uh, and anybody else wants to come forward, uh, the water's warm, so uh, let's, let's pray. Father, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for you are indeed good, and your love endures forever. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Would you please stand and sing with us? was a wretch I remember who I was I was lost I was blind I was running out of time sin separated that breach was far too wide but from the far side of the chasm you held me in your sight so you made a way across the great divide left behind heaven's throne to build it here inside there at the cross you paid the debt i owe broke my chains freed my soul for the first time I had hope Thank you, Jesus, for the blood applied Thank you, Jesus, it has washed me white Thank you, Jesus, you have saved my life Brought me from the dark into glorious light you took my place laid inside my tomb of sin you were buried for three days but then you walked right out again and now death has no sting and life has no end for i have been transformed by the blood of the lamb thank you jesus for the blood applied thank you jesus 
cross, it has washed me white. Thank you, Jesus, you have saved my life, brought me from the darkness into glorious light. There is nothing stronger than the wonder working power. us sons and daughters we are ransomed by our father through the blood the blood there is nothing stronger than the wonder working power of the blood the blood that calls us sons and daughters we are ransomed by our Father through the blood, the blood. Thank you, Jesus, for the blood applied. Thank you, Jesus, it has washed me white. Thank you, Jesus, you have saved my from the darkness into glorious light glory to his name glory to his name there to my heart was the blood applied glory to his name. Please be seated. Beautiful. Thank you for the beautiful singing and, uh, and for, uh, Lord, the presence uh, that you bring. And, and right now, this is Heather, Heather Joseph. Uh, Heather's been attending here uh, going back about six months or so, and it's just been a joy to have her. She's a really a good friend of my nephew Chris's, and it's good to have them here together. And I just want to take a moment to ask you, Again, that question that we talked about the other day. Heather, do you believe with all your heart and life that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God? Yeah, come on. That's right. That's good. Excellent. You've made that bold confession of faith before others. Let me pray for you. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for, uh, for Heather and, Lord, for this, this moment she'll remember for the rest of her life. Uh, Lord, the day that she did what Martha did, what Philip did, what Peter did, stood before others. Uh, maybe they stuttered, maybe they trembled, uh, but they said the words, we believe with all of our hearts that Jesus is the Christ. I believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, Savior of my life. Thank you for making that confession, the bold confession, the good confession. Uh, and Lord, thank you for giving it to us. And it's in the name of Christ we pray. such a beautiful thing as we prepare our hearts for the Lord's Supper. You know, this is the one ceremony that's gone on for 2,000 years. And every time brothers and sisters gather together at the Lord's table, we remember the day and the time that the blood was applied to our hearts. And we remember this great sacrifice. On that day, Hannah couldn't catch a break. Her, co her co-wife mocked her childhood. Her obtuse husband argued that he was better than even ten sons. And now Eli, Eli, her priest, accused her of being wicked. He said to her, how long will you go on being drunk? Put your wine away from you. But she hadn't been pouring any drink. Hannah answered, No, my Lord, I am a woman troubled in my spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but I have been pouring out, I have been Shephak, my soul before the Lord. Shephak is a Hebrew word borrowed from the temple. It's used to, um, 
for the pouring out of the blood of sacrifice upon the altar. See, Job's soul was shut up within him. As the psalmist says, I have I shepak my shepak my heart before him. As and Paul writing in Greek echoes this Hebrew idiom. He says, I am being poured out as a drink offering at in the time of my departure from him. The Messiah says in Psalms twenty two fourteen that I am shepak like water. Indeed, at his death, water will pour from his side, along with blood. This, this is the blood poured out that this is the blood poured out for many for the forgiveness of their sins. The blood that have that having purified us gives us confidence to cry out to God and know that we are heard. So let's pray. Oh God, our our refuge, as we pour out our hearts before you, answer us. Father, we have come to the table of God, and we ask that you bless this simple offering of bread and the fruit of the vine. Father, we ask that the blood once again be applied to our hearts. And Lord, we ask that you would never let us forget the great sacrifice of Jesus our Lord. And our prayer, Lord, is that you would come again and come soon. Maranatha, come, Lord Jesus. Amen. May I take of your communion. Your confession of faith that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit for the forgiveness of your sins. And I receive the fresh, precious It's been wonderful to be in the Lord's house today and to have the energy that we felt to keep the momentum going. Uh, we're just grateful that, uh, that uh, Jesus is here and uh, that we take the name of Jesus home with us. Uh, and so I see some of our precious children in the back. They always come in to watch the baptism. So, hi guys, good to see you back there. Uh, and so I just want to invite you to go your separate ways but spend some time together enjoying each other. Is there something I'm missing? All right, let's pray. Father, we're just thankful, Lord. Your Father, I know you you and the angels are celebrating.